we have some interesting news regarding Supreme Skateboarding New York. They don't even call themselves Supreme Skateboards, do they? Supreme Skateboards. No, I don't think so. It's just Supreme now. But anyway, Supreme, the quintessential streetwear brand, a brand that set the pace for all other brands. Well, not in my experience. My brand that set pace for me was a baby nape, especially during the Nego years. That was one of my... It still is easily one of my favorite brands, a brand that I'm always kind of looking for the vintage and the core products to kind of purchase. But anyway, Supreme have gone a bit... I wouldn't say stiff, acquired. Yeah, have they sold out? Effectively, it's selling out. It must be. Supreme have basically sold um, their entire company to a holding company called VF or something that owns Vans and North Face. And I'm wondering, could this be the end of Supreme? Could this be the end of their dominance? Could this be the end of their cool factor? Because part of the reason why, in my opinion, why they're as cool as they were was this idea that they were an independent brand started up by James Jebbia, kind of an offshoot from the stuff that he was doing in New York in the early 90s or late 90s. Um, he obviously saw a gap in the market for premium quality clothing for skateboarders. They were you know, used to wearing some pretty dreadful basics. So he came in, put a brand together, um, had the shop staff with you know skateboarders from the local community and essentially had a bit of a hands-off approach in terms of representing and fronting a brand, but had people that are actually connected with skateboarders skateboarding that were entrenched in the community representing it repping it as hard as possible which is why supreme came in with little to no resistance in the skateboarding community apart from the times that they sort of dance with the hype beast right a bit of salsa but for the most part very well respected so anyway this really cool article from new york times details a bit of the um questions out there at the moment it says can supreme stay cool while being corporate or while going corporate sorry it's written by vanessa friedman who's a little bit hyperbolic and stuff she talks about but i like her writings and regardless so it says the following once upon a time just an underground brand called supreme began to percolate into mainstream a prominent star writer and characterized its appeal to a new york times as a company that refuses to sell out closely held secret to escape kids and streetwear aficionados everywhere it was an insider famous for its barbara kruger-esque tabloid happy red and white logo its ability to synthesize all sorts of cultural references in a hoodie and its hotly anticipated random product drops that was 2012 in 20, 2014 the company accepted its first private equity investment in the good partners in 2017 it sold another 50 percent to the carlisle group the pe megalith and this week it announced a vf corporation the owner of 19 brands including timberland vans and the north face with a reported 2020 revenue of two ten point five billion had bought the whole thing the deal valued supreme at more than 2.1 billion and completed apart for an indie brand darling to the heart of the establishment sell out complete yes of course laying the groundwork as it is i think for myself personally I was purchasing Supreme. I'm going to say my first piece might have come around 2007, 2006. That's when I kind of got into it. And looking at the dates, that's also probably around the time that I stopped buying Supreme was 2012, 2014, when they started to get the investment from all these other different places. Now, that isn't because the investment sort of like change the product but i did see a change in the customers and obviously a change in the people that were buying it and actually no i lie the change for me came stylistically when noah barba barbizian barbizian i forgot how you pronounce his name from of course noah ny when he left and he went to start up noah the aesthetic of the brand completely changed and there was a lot more logos um a lot more scripts a lot more bright colors that's when i remember the shorts the shorts were the first indicator the shorts were really great uh prior when noah was still at the brand he'd make some really cool surf swim shorts running shorts um really nicely done great lining uh great little details embroidery bits little bits of finishing but in the moment he left the shorts started Im immediately to be emblazoned with supreme written on the back of the bum you know massive box logos on the front like really odd stuff and that really kind of set me off a little bit and kind of you know uh made me kind of feel a way about the brand and then i think again you know you kind of get older your style sort of evolves a little bit and it stops being your sort of basics brand in terms if that can be said supreme was for me was sort of like my basics that i'd wear in terms of that streetwear sort of clothing where it comes to t-shirts snapbacks hoodies and outerwear i thought they kind of killed it and then i think that also might have lined up with the time that uniqlo came to the uk and they obviously started selling um 
outerwear and kind of menswear pieces that why in my opinion kind of suited me a little bit more and were very quintessentially you know that sort of like japanese streetwear sort of aesthetic that you kind of might have seen in i don't know what's that brand called oh, what's that brand that makes the basics doesn't matter but you know what i mean they'd make like really great down jackets really great denim jackets great pullovers decent trench coats nice long long sleeve tops thermal tops decent selfish denim loads of pieces that you can kind of work with that you don't really need to kind of have your whole wardrobe be entirely supreme so that's when i sort of lost interest in it myself it continues here. Lauded does a win for VF, whose stock rose 12.5% on the Monday. The agreement was also seen as a sign of the grow up status of um, the grown up status, sorry, of streetwear market, now officially recognized by Wall Street, which is, you know, makes complete sense. Um, what exactly it means for Supreme, aside from money, is a more complicated story. Though the money in the time of the pandemic is not to be underestimated, after all, Supreme founder James Jebbia also told the Times that the brand needs to be cool to survive and the cool and quarterly results don't really mix well. Um, that's true, but the part of me that i don't know not getting into one's finances but i wonder how much money they actually need to be operational because they've received a lot of investment over the years right two big chunks of investment in the early 2000s or what, what did they say there in 2014 and whatever it was 2014 and 2017 and now companies come out and bought the entire thing i wonder how much they actually needed to make it actually profitable right so i don't know part of me thinks it's a little bit um, unnecessary but i'm sure there's obviously a greater vision in mind maybe the expansion into italy and milan right that's meant to be a rumored store i'm sure a lot of that's been affected by covid and covid in general must affect their business but a lot of their business comes mainly from online i'm assuming especially when they didn't have a lot of retail stores most of their business um, outside the stores of numerica was definitely online people kind of reselling items purchasing it for their own collection blah 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 it always sell out so i'm not too sure how that marries up but again you know they've got prime retail locations around the world um i'm sure those aren't cheap as well so maybe the it justifies this big sale it continues vf said it was going to leave the brand alone the leadership including mr jebbia was staying in charge his headquarters will remain in new york that's never going to happen though and you know that and if you purchase a brand for what was it 2.5 billion dollars there's no way you're going to leave them alone you're definitely going to want to get your um influence um in there you're going to want to lend a hand lend some leadership skills whatever so you know the the end is nigh for supreme because it always happens for most brands it's really impossible to get swallowed up by a big conglomerate such as vf and not get somehow diluted in some way shape or form it continues and certainly VF has a good track record with its outdoor uh, workwear brands, which has gone um, from NAF to core. As with Timberland and Dickies, VF management said it, it just wants to support the Supreme's future growth. And speaking of growth, there was way there was so much potential. Only 12 stores plus uh, one very healthy e-commerce site only you know so i wonder what they want to do there going forward but therein lies the problem supreme's ownership chose mass distribution over remaining venable good web smith a founder of 2pm a newsletter on media and commerce tweeted um a viblen good being a product that increases in desirability even as it increases in price given its aura of exclusivity okay cool after all among other things supreme was built on the principle of scarcity it's what drove its acolytes crazy it's what made them stand in line or camp out for hours to snatch up limited edition hoodies or damien her skate decks or most famously a branded bricks um it drove up the resale value and of said items in sometimes astonishing way at the price height the brick was going for one thousand dollars you remember back in the day when james jebber did an interview with i forgot what site it was it was on like a bt domain and he said something like how much he hates the resale culture and he wants kids to just get a hold of the items and he wish he could do something different to change it. He was really, he seemed quite passionate and quite sincere. It's funny, like where it's kind of gone now, right? Where they sort of like, they don't say they'd lean into it, but they just accept what it is and just do what they do, um, I guess. But it's just interesting to see how it's gone up from there. Continue. And there it gave birth to private chat rooms and Reddit threads where Supreme Lights shared intel on what was coming and why the complete set of 248 Supreme Skate decks sold for $800,000. That's some of these 2019. That's a bargain now, though, if you're considering. Or maybe they over paid for it, but I don't think so. I think stuff like that was definitely going to go up in value over time. And again, Reddit threads, cool, but do you remember back in the day going on Splay? forums and talking about supreme or going on super future super future had a pretty cool supreme um fan base on there actually there was a pretty cool guys there that really did supreme justice on that forum some great times i purchased some really bargain basement stuff on there oh i might have bought a legitimate box logo hoodie on super future forums for like 200 dollars. those are the days anyway it continues it's part of what supreme so special 
makes it spe- so it's part of what made Supreme so special in a world where even the most exclusive luxury brands had hundreds of stores and most chief executives when asked how big was big enough would say would only offer I only well I'll know when I see it and they hadn't seen it yet it's part of what made Supreme such a desirable partner in the dating game of stuff in in the dating game of stuff it was hard to get cool um, it's also what allows Supreme to engage in a delicate balancing act of both framing its products as an I- ironic meta commentary on the culture of consumption for generations that wanted to in- reject their trappings and also exploit the culture for its own ends. Maybe not so much anymore, though the brand has once called the Chanel of downtown streetwear, which is definitely not anymore. It's worth noting that Chanel is still independent. Now Supreme no longer is. And that's the telling part. Part of the reason why I love Rick Owens and why I wear it consistently, you know, I've got the pants on now at the moment, is because, you know, for the most part, Rick remains, you know, I think he has majority ownership of it, and he's only given the other half to a very close confidant and friend, who's also a big Rick Owens fan, he's always dressed head to toe in it, I think he's some dark haired dude, I forgot his name, but for the most part, it's fairly, you know, independent in how it operates, how it runs, of course the collections are, in some people's eyes, quite derivative, but in my opinion, they're always an evolution of the previous season, he's always very good at kind of touching upon what's going on in the cultural zeitgeist, without being too, you know, too cringy, too corny, and the clothes are just great, right, the culture around them is great, the people that buy them are awesome great little community michelle lamy is a great advocate and ambassador for it rick of course looks stupendous in his stuff there's that guy at the moment now what's his name is it tyrone Tyrone, the guy that's a model and um i think a design a consultant uh for rick owens at the moment the blonde guy he's a really good ambassador for it so some really good people out there who kind of represent rick owens the right way and it's sort of for that made by a, a, a fashion you know um enthusiast and fan for fashion enthusiasts and fans right but it's hard to see supreme and think the same thing right they kind of occupy the same sort of lane that alakai is operating right um and that's the kind of issue at hand anyway it continues in this prepared statement mr jebbia said the deal would allow the brand to maintain its culture and approach but the one thing wall street demands is growth either through more products or stores as the headline in the footwear news said analyst the vf supreme marriage is going to be bigger than forecast of course there's no way they're going to allow supreme to just have 12 stores and have one retail outlet they're definitely going to want to expand into different markets maybe a retail store in china will be the first thing to see how diluted the brand has got and of course the app post in milan maybe something in holland um wherever they you know because they've got one i guess in france in paris sorry so maybe they've got a really big uh outreach in in holland i'm assuming especially in amsterdam that would make a lot of sense but there's no way they're going to allow them just to kind of run the way they are um this sort of like hands-off approach is only for the headlines and the papers it continues here where say financial folks uh, get bug eyed and dollar signs, however, fans must see the illusion. Perhaps it simply marks the end of an inevitable journey that comes to all great disruptive brands that begin life as outsiders. They subvert the status quo only to pique the interest of the dominant players who absorb their strategies and then go to absorb the other actual sources. And again, if I was younger, I would be a lot more angry at this. It would be a lot more upsetting, but I've moved on from the brand. I've evolved my style. I also understand that people need to make money. They need to keep the lights on. And there are other things at play that are probably dis you know playing a factor into why they decided to kind of sell and of course you know being valued at 2.1 billion is no joke there's no guarantee that the brand is going to remain core for years for years to come we see what happened with baby nape which is you know mostly because they extracted nigo from it but since they got swallowed up by the it company Bape has never been the same so there's no guarantee that supreme will hang around and still be the same thing so there's no way that you could kind of get that offer come through your email inbox and you just turn it down because you want to stay true to streetwear and streetwear now at the moment what is it really right what is it is it, is it just the brands is it the sort of like merch brands that you buy of some influencer kid on instagram like joy division is that streetwear um is streetwear the stuff that you buy at a concert somewhere when they collaborate with a brand like V-Loan, your favorite artist, is that streetwear? Is streetwear the stuff that you see in Zoomies? Is streetwear the stuff that you see on Essence? Is streetwear the stuff that you see worn by some YouTube influencers? What is actual streetwear? So sometimes I can understand why a brand want to do that. But hey, I uh, I digress. 
um, it continues here. Fashion uh, is great at that. See sneakers and all the enfant terribles have to grow have to grow up to risk or risk becoming caricatures of themselves. Or I know a couple of those on the scene. See Jean Paul Gaultier. Perhaps it's natural evolution and the old guard relaxing the, in the into comfortable perch to make way for the next generation. It's the cycle of a brand's life. So yeah, maybe that's true. But again, it's disappointing if you're uh, you know a big uh, Supreme fan. Again, myself included. I think there's a lot of a lot of lot of brands one specifically that i kind of like or two actually it definitely patterns to see in terms of replacing that sort of supreme size hole in your collection very consistent in what they're putting out at the moment whoever's designing for both patterns to see deserves a real round of applause they're absolutely smashing at the moment but yeah man inevitable a downfall inevitable selling out of supreme it was bound to happen um you know valuing the brand at 2.1 billion is nothing to scoff at I'm sure we all had a part to play in it some way, shape or form from the stuff that we resold and bought. And yeah, man, big up them for doing what they're doing. Let's see if it survives. So I'd love to know your comments down below um, or your thoughts on the issue. Do you think Supreme will remain relevant? Will it re remain? Will it kind of have that cool factor that it had in the beginning or will it inevitably die like all great brands do in the end? Let me know in the comments down below.